it's time again for retro cooking. My first video about recipes from the late 70s seems to be quite popular. So why not do the same thing again? This time with less intro text and I start directly with cooking. Here are more recipes from the 70s. The first recipe is a filled meatloaf and it is again from the German TV magazine Herzu. A recipe from a Herzu reader from 1979 and I have modified it only a little bit. Camembert meatloaf with red wine sauce. For 4 persons you need 1 roll from the day before, 500 grams mixed minced meat, 1 egg, 1 large onion, fresh or dried lovage, parsley, 125 to 150 grams camembert, I recommend camembert with green pepper, dried oregano, paprika powder, celery salt, alternatively herb salt, soy sauce, salt, pepper, 400 to 500 milliliter red wine, 200 to 250 milliliter broth, some brandy, some milk, some cream, flour, starch, butter and oil for frying, and baking paper. Cut the roll into small pieces and put them in a bowl. Add a little milk to soak and put aside. In the meantime, chop the onions finely and then fry it in a pan. Deglaze with soy sauce and fry a little more. Then put the pan aside. If you have fresh lovage, chop it. Put the minced meat into a bowl and add the soaked bread roll. If it is too liquid, first squeeze it a little. Add the egg, the freshly chopped or dried lovage and also the onions. Now season the meat mixture with the remaining spices. Oregano, paprika powder, celery salt, pepper, salt and soy sauce. First mix the ingredients a little with a spoon and then use your hands to mix the meat dough well. Cut the camembert into slices and longer pieces in half again. Cut a large piece of baking paper and spread it out on your kitchen worktop. Put the meat dough on the baking paper. Now wet your hands and form a rectangle from the meat dough. It should be about 22 by 30 centimeters. As a help, you can take a sheet of A4 paper that has this measurement. My cutting board has exactly this measurement and of course it doesn't have to be exactly to the centimeter. Once the meat dough is formed, arrange the camembert in three lines. The three lines should be parallel to the short side of the rectangle. Now roll up the meatloaf along the length of the rectangle, just like a roulade. In a roasting pan, casserole or something similar, heat the butter and oil. Carefully place the meatloaf in it and brown from the bottom side. Sprinkle the top with a little flour. Then turn the meatloaf over and brown from the other side. Again, sprinkle the new top side with a little flour. Brown the meatloaf on all sides. Then add the broth and the wine. Let it come to boil and then simmer on low heat on the stove for 40 minutes. You can take a meat thermometer to be sure. At 72 degrees Celsius it is still slightly pink and at 75 degrees it is well done but still juicy. While the meatloaf is simmering you can prepare the side dishes. I recommend pumpkin wedges baked in the oven and croquettes. Also the parsley is still missing for the meatloaf. 
chop plenty of parsley and spread it out on a meat platter. Mix the starch with a little liquid in a small bowl. When the meatloaf is done, transfer it to the meat platter and roll in the parsley until the meatloaf is coated all around with parsley. Bring the meat broth to boil and thicken with starch. Then season with cream, brandy, salt, pepper and soy sauce. Let's move on to the next recipe. This time it's not from the Hörzu, but from a cookbook from 1982. All about eggs from the Burda publishing house. Eggs Brussels style, but I prefer to call it filled chicory with eggs. By strict definition it's not the 70s anymore, but the recipe sounds clearly much more like the 70s than like the 80s when I compare it to cookbooks from the later 80s. Per person you need 1 chicory, half an onion, 40 to 50 grams cooked ham in slices, 1 or 2 eggs, spicy cheese, 4 to 5 teaspoons sour cream, fresh herbs, for example chives, parsley or lovage, lemon juice, salt, pepper, nutmeg, a little sugar and a little oil. Chop the onion finely. Give it into a pot. Add a little oil and mix, but do not turn on the stove top yet. Wash and dry the chicory. Cut off the top and remove four large leaves from the outside per person. Cut the rest of the chicory in half and then chop it. Now you can turn on the stove top and sweat the onions a little bit. After a few minutes, add the chopped chicory, stir a little and turn the heat down to low. Add a little lemon juice and sugar. Season with salt and pepper. Simmer the chicory over low heat without a lid in its own juice for a few minutes. Stir from time to time. In the meantime, preheat the oven to 220 degrees Celsius top and bottom heat and cook the eggs. Cook the eggs only shortly and then quench them so that the yolk is still very liquid because in the oven it will cook a little more. Also chop the fresh herbs. And chop the ham. When the chicory is cooked, add the herbs as well as the ham. Add the sour cream to the chicory and season everything well. Now peel the eggs and oil a baking dish. Put the outer leaves of the chicory in the baking dish. Two leaves together form a kind of shell. Now put the cooked chicory in these shells. Put an egg in each shell or only in one shell if you want to eat only one egg. Finally, add grated cheese over the chicory shells and gratinate the dish in the oven for about 5 minutes. I recommend mashed potatoes as a side dish. Call me crazy, but I love mashed potatoes made with a blender instead of a potato masher. Star chefs turn up their nose at it because it melts a bit, but it tastes much creamier. The next recipe is a soup and is from a cookbook from 1972. It is actually for the pressure cooker, but with these ingredients it is done very quickly even without a pressure cooker. For 4 persons you need 500 grams potatoes, 250 grams carrots, 2 leeks, 250 grams rolls or white bread from the day before, 1400 ml broth, 1 natural lemon, a few tablespoons of sour cream, parsley, dried lovage, yes I use lovage really often, I know, salt, pepper, 
soy sauce and one or two egg yolks. That's really a very simple recipe and nevertheless quite tasty. Peel the potatoes and cut them into cubes. Peel the carrots as well, cut them into slices and add them to the potatoes. Wash the leeks well and cut them into rings. Do not add them to the rest of the vegetables but put them aside. Cut the rolls or bread into small pieces and add them also to the potatoes and carrots. Now put the potatoes, carrots and bread in a pot. Add the broth and heat it up. Cook the vegetables on low heat with the lid closed for about 10 minutes. Steer from time to time so that the bread does not stick to the bottom of the pot. When the 10 minutes are over, add the leeks and cook for another 7 minutes. In the meantime, chop the parsley. Grate the zest of the lemon and squeeze the lemon juice. When the vegetables are cooked, turn off the heat and add the parsley and lemon zest. Add the egg yolk to the soup and stir it in quickly. Then season the soup to taste with a few tablespoons of sour cream, lemon juice, salt, pepper, lovage and soy sauce. A few months ago I went back to the library of the FU in Berlin and looked through more issues of the Hörzu. This time taken from the years 1970 to 1975. The next recipe is from this research and is from 1973. Filled zucchini with mackerel. I've modified it a bit, but that should no longer surprise anyone. Per person you need 1 medium zucchini, 1 small can of mackerel fillet, 1 egg, 1 and a half slices of toast, 1 teaspoon of green pepper, nutmeg, paprika powder, dried lovage, marjoram or oregano, celery salt, soy sauce, salt, a little sugar, parsley, 6 to 8 teaspoons of sour cream, 3 teaspoons double concentrated tomato paste, 100 to 150 ml white wine and some parmesan. First toast the bread. Then cut it into small cubes and put them in a bowl. Add the egg and mix well. Chop the parsley finely. Carefully chop the green pepper a little bit. Add both to the toast and stir. Preheat the oven to 220 degrees Celsius top and bottom heat. Take the mackerel fillet out of the can and save the can oil. Clean the fish from the oil with kitchen paper as much as possible. Then pick the fish apart with your fingers and add it to the bowl as well. Mix everything well and season it with paprika powder, dried herbs, celery salt, soy sauce, salt and nutmeg. Then stir well. Now cut the zucchini in half along the length. Remove the inside of the two halves with a teaspoon. The removed zucchini flesh can be used for example the next day in a pureed vegetable soup. Put some of the can oil in a baking dish and oil the dish with it. Put the zucchini halves into the baking dish. Now fill the zucchini halves with the mackerel mixture. Put the tomato paste into a bowl. Add 6 teaspoons of sour cream, the rest may be needed later. Pour in the wine and mix everything well. Season the sauce with sugar, soy sauce and salt. Pour the sauce around the zucchini halves and cook the zucchini in the open baking dish for 25 minutes. 
Then remove the zucchini halves from the baking dish and stir the thickened sauce. Thin the sauce to the desired consistency with a little wine and perhaps water and season to taste with a little more sour cream, sugar and salt. Serve the zucchini with the sauce and freshly grated parmesan cheese on top. The next recipe is a goulash recipe with an unusual but delicious taste. It is called Mannheim Pepper Pot and comes again from the TV magazine Hör zu from 1979. Mannheim, by the way, is a city in southern Germany. For four persons you need 1 kg beef goulash, 4 large onions, 160 grams pumpernickel or dark rye bread, 300 to 500 milliliter beer, for example a dark wheat, 150 milliliter strung broth, 3 tablespoons of green pepper, uh, maybe I showed too many recipes with green pepper, uh, anyway, 3 or 4 teaspoons capers, 1 teaspoon sugar, 1 or 2 teaspoons ground caraway, dried marjoram, juice of half a lemon, salt, pepper, soy sauce, butter and oil for frying. First chop the onions. Heat the butter and oil in a roasting pan or casserole and add the onions. Sweat the onions a little bit over medium heat. Then add the goulash meat and stir well. Fry for a few minutes, turning from time to time until the meat is fried all over. In the meantime, half or carefully chop the green peppercorns. Grind the bread in a blender. Add the bread to the meat and stir well. Also add the green pepper. Fry everything again shortly. Then fill up with 300 ml of beer. Remove the bread from the bottom of the roasting pan. Add the broth as well. Heat up the liquid and add the lemon juice and the sugar. Season to taste with soy sauce and salt but do not season too strongly because the liquid will reduce during stewing and so the flavor will become more intense. Then put the roasting pan with the lid closed into the preheated oven. At 160 degrees Celsius top and bottom heat, the goulash needs about two to two and a half hours. Steer two or three times so that the bread does not stick to the roasting pan too much. Just before the goulash is ready, Chop the capers a bit. Remove the roasting pan from the oven and unstick the thickened sauce from the roasting pan. Add the capers as well as the caraway and stir. If the goulash is too thick, thin it with more beer. Then season to taste with soy sauce, salt, pepper, marjoram, and maybe some more beer. This goulash fits perfectly with potato dumplings, croquettes or mashed potatoes. And as a vegetable side dish with cabbage or even better Brussels sprouts. That were five main dishes again, all from the 70s. To finish, here comes a dessert. A really simple recipe, but also very surprising. In the Hertzu from 1975, it is simply called Raspberry Mix. More accurate is perhaps Sparkling Raspberry Ice Cream Dessert. For 4 persons you need 400 grams raspberry ice cream, 350 grams raspberries, 6 tablespoons of natural yogurt, 1 small bottle of bitter lemon and some rum. Wash and select the raspberries. Put the raspberries in a blender cup and add the yogurt. Then puree with a hand blender. Stir in a shot of rum. 
and then place in the fridge for a few hours. Just before serving the dessert, quickly cut the ice cream into cubes and put them in large glasses. Pour the raspberry yogurt puree on top. Serve the glasses this way and fill up with bitter lemon directly at the table. And these were more recipes from the 70s. Five main dishes and one dessert. I hope you enjoyed the video and the recipes. The recipes are available again as PDF in English as well as in German. You can find the link in the video description. I would be happy about likes and channel subscriptions and if there is enough interest, I will produce the next episode of Retro Cooking. In this sense, thanks for watching.